Buenos días, bienvenidos al curso módulo de competitividad 10, código FG708. Today we are on week number 12. The topics are number one, meat preservation. Number two, irradiation and curing. Number three, natural preser preservatives. Let's go ahead with our class for today. We have our class objectives. The first one is examine methods for irradiation, curing and smoking meat products. Second, examine the variety of meats made available through curing. Third, learn to use natural preservatives to preserve different types of meat. Let's continue. Okay, today we're going to check some merchandising strategies that are used uh, in the modern industry to preserve meat. Uh, today, most meat is sold in containers, as you can see at the supermarkets and a refrigeration makes this possible. Traditionally, curing and sausages were required. So uh, we're going to speak more about curing and sausages that uh, were used traditionally. This is our, our objective for today, and let's continue. Um, first, we have um, a method that is uh, used today, that is the irradiation. And there are some types of irradiation, the alpha, the beta, gamma, and C rays. And uh, this type of uh, uh, method is used to preserve not only meat, but also fruits, like we can see here. They are using uh, gamma rays to preserve uh, fruit in order to kill bacteria. So this way we will be able to preserve some types of foods, not only uh, meat. Now let's continue. And why to, we can cure meats? One of the objectives is to preserve the meat using a natural preservation. Another option is to, to give variety because if we preserve meat using this uh, cure method, we can add spices and flavors to the same old meat. And another, another objective is saving electricity, because we know that if we save electricity, we are going to save money. So we are using this method basically to save money. And if you ask which species is cured, we can say that we can cure uh, meat pork, fish, lamb, or poultry. And what is the most common cured beef product? This is the corned beef. We can see here an example to your left that the corned beef is the common meat that we can have uh, with this uh, method. Let's continue. Types of cures. There are two main types of cure, and we can use the dry salt cure or the dry sugar cure. 
these are the common methods to preserve meat. Sulcure uses only salt, and it is used primarily in pork and beans preservation. The second method, that is the dry sugar cure, we can use salt and sugar applied in a dry drop, like we can see here, and sugar cure is a traditional method to preserve and cure ham. Let's continue. Another option is to use sweet pickle cure. And this uh, method is the most common curing process that uses 90% water and honey baked hams. As an example, we can see here that also cow tongue are preserved using this method. Another option is uh, cover pickle cure. And in this case, we need to immerse uh, the meat in water and sell them just because of expenses. Now we're going to talk about uh, curing, curing ingredients uh, use in more detail. So we can see that uh, salt or sodium chlorine is used as a principal cure ingredient. This is the only ingredient that can be used by itself. And it also adds flavor to the meat that is the major effect. It also enhances the transport of other cure ingredients. And how it works? Salt pulls moisture from the microbes by the process of osmosis. And it also pulls moisture from meat. In other words, salt removes all water from microbes and from the meat cells. This is the effect that salt uh, makes through the meat and microbes. We were talking about sugar and here we have that uh, we can use sucrose or dextrose to preserve meat. But be careful with this because artificial sweeteners are not allowed. Sugar counteracts the taste of salt and sugar has very little sweetening action. Sugar also colors the product when we're using brown sugar. Sugar also provide energy for bacteria in fermented products. Another curing ingredients are nitrates and nitrites. These uh, nitrates develop color, prevent outgrowth of botulinum, that is a type of bacteria. Nitrates and nitrites prevent worm over flavor and also help with flavor intensity. These uh, nitrates retard rancidity. Uh, now we can see the recommendation, the recommendations that they uh, have for hams. Remember that we saw 
a measure of concentration in our last uh, class. And they recommend here that a maximum of 200 parts per million sodium nitrite can be used to preserve hams. While for bacon, they recommend a maximum of 120 parts per million sodium nitrite. Here we can see some examples because these nitrates and nitrites are used to preserve this type of sausages here. We can see hams and also bacon and all of these products looks that we see on the picture so let's continue uh, here we can see how the bacon color changes by using different concentration of nitrites so in the first image, we can see uh, the color without using sodium nitrite. The second image shows the aspect of the meat using 40 parts per million. The third image shows the aspect and color if we use 80 parts per million. And the last one, you can see the aspect and color if we use 120 parts per million. That is the recommendation with uh, bacon or to preserve bacon. There are other options to preserve meat and they are ascorbates and some examples of ascorbates are ascorbic acid, sodium ascorbate, sodium erythorbate, and these are required for cure pickles using 550 parts per million. Remember this measure we saw in our last class. Ascorbates catalyze conversion of nitrite to nitric oxide. And it also inhibits nitrosamine formation, maintains color, and can be sprayed on cooked surface to reduce fading during display. Here you can see an example from this image on how to get the sodium ascorbate. Now let's continue. But before I can continue with the class, let me check how many people are connected on YouTube. Just a minute, I'm trying to check here. Uh, okay, yes. I can see here uh, Walter Masaya, Lady Orellana, Pablo Quintana. Uh, yes, uh, you uh, you are in recent the this class. 
e okay yes this class is for the hour uh 10 10 15 10 10 30 yes yes you are in reason so don't worry i'm going to repeat some of the topics so uh, let's continue for now So I'm going to, to start again for the people that came at 10.30, just a minute, I'm going to. Okay, let's uh, repeat some of the topics because uh, I started a little bit early. So let's continue again. So the topics for today are the number one, meat preservation, the number two, irradiation and curing, and number three, the natural preservatives. Our class objectives are uh, the first one, examine methods for it irradiation, curing, and smoking meat products. Second, examine the variety of meats made available through curing. And the last one, learn to use natural preservatives to preserve different types of meats. We were talking about that merchandising strategies are using today most meat uh, that is sold in containers, like the ones that we can see here. And they are using a uh, refrigeration that makes this possible. But traditionally, curing and sausages were required. So we're going to study these uh, curing and sausages methods that we'll be uh, recommending for the preservation of meat in our farms. Irradiation. Irradiation is one of the modern methods that the industry is using to preserve meat and other products like fruits. And they are using alpha, beta, gamma, Z rays. And for fruits and meat, they are using gamma rays in order to kill bacteria. This is a safe method for food preservation. But alpha is not used in food industry. And why we need to cure meats? We need to apply this method in order to preserve uh, meat using the traditional form of preservation. We also use these cure methods as a variety that adds spices and flavors to the same old meat. And the other reason is that we can save electricity using this method. And you know that if we save electricity, we are saving money. So we need to save uh, electricity and also money. Which species is cured? We can cure pork meat, fish, 
lamb or poultry. And what is the most common cured beef product? The most common uh, beef product is the corned beef. To your left, you can see an example of corned beef. Types of cures. There are two main types of cures, and if we use a dry salt cure, or we can use also dry sugar cure. Dry salt cure uses only salt, and it is used primarily in pork and beans, while dry sugar cure uses salt and sugar applied in dry drop. It is a, it is a traditional country cured ham. Another method we can use is the sweet pickle cure. Uh, that is the most common curing process that uses 90% water, honey, baked hams. Here we can see an example of cow tongue that is also preserved using this method. Another option is cover pickle cure. And in this case, we need to immerse in water and sell them just because of expense. Curing ingredients. There are some ingredients that we can use to preserve meat. And the first one is salt or sodium chlorine. This is the principal cure ingredient. Only ingredient that can be used by itself. Salt adds flavor. And this is the major effect that we can have using this press servant. This also enhances the transport of other cure ingredients and how it works. Salt pulls moisture from the microbes by the process of osmosis. Salt also pulls moisture from meat. In other words, salt removes water from meat cells and from microbes. So they are not able to survive without water. So this is the effect that salt produces over or through the meat and microbes. Now let's continue. The other ingredient that we can use is sugar. And there are two types of sugar, sucrose or dextrose. But be careful with this because artificial sweeter, sweeteners are not allowed. We cannot use artificial sweeteners to preserve meat. Sugar counteracts the taste of salt. Sugar has very little sweetening action and sugar uh, add colors to the product like the brown color when we use brown sugar. Sugar also provide energy for bacteria in fermented products. So let's continue. Let me uh, remove this, the marks first. Okay. Here we have another ingredients that we can use to preserve meats, and they are the nitrates and nitrites. 
nitrates and nitrites develop color. They prevent a growth of C. botulinum, that is a type of bacteria, and they prevent warm over flavor microwave, and they help with flavor intensity. They also retard rancidity. So the recommendations uh, for cured hams are that we can use a maximum of 200 parts per million of sodium nitrite to preserve hams. Remember that we saw this concentration, this is measure of concentration in our last class. So the bacon, we can use uh, a maximum of 120 parts per million sodium nitrite to preserve bacon. And here we can see the, these products that are uh, preserved using this type of concentrations of nitrates and nitrites. So these sausages here were treated with this type of ingredients in order to be preserved. So let's continue. Here uh, we can see the aspect and color of uh, the bacon if we use different concentrations of in sodium uh, nitrite. You can see in the first image the aspect and color if we don't use the preservative and on the second image, we can see the aspect and color if we use 40 part per million of uh, sodium nitrite. The third image, we can see the color and aspect if we use 80 parts per million. And on the last image, we can see the color and aspect if we use 120 parts per million of sodium nitrite. So this is the recommended concentration that we can use to preserve bacon. Now let's continue. Here we have another example of uh, curing ingredients. We can use also this ingredient called ascorbates. We can use the ascorbic acid, sodium ascorbate, sodium erythorbate, and, re and it required, and it is required for cure pickles using a concentration of 550 parts per million. These ascorbates are used to catalyze conversion of uh, nitrite to nit nitric oxide, and it inhibits nitrosamine formation, maintains color, and can be sprayed on cut surface to reduce fading during display. So this is an example of a bottle of uh, sodium ascorbate that we can use to preserve meats. Let's continue. Uh, another ingredient that we can use is the phosphates for water retention. And also we can use the alkaline phosphate that gives more stable color, reduces oxidation, protects against browning and increase water holding capacity necessary for added water product. So here we can see on this label uh, this artificial um, flavor, also sodium 
hexametaphosphate that is here. And as uh, sorbic acid, and they mentioned here that these are the preservatives. But let's continue. Uh, we can see that the sweeteners like corn syrup and honey are very common. This is the product we were checking on the previous slide. We can also use potassium sorbate as a that acts an, as a antimicrobial. We can see here a, a bag of potassium sorbate. And also we can use smoke in liquid form or wood. In this picture, we can see the smoke that is uh, used to preserve meat. Water. We can use water because water carries all other ingredients and adds juiceness. So water is uh, acting here as a mixer to, uh, to get some ingredients together and to get uh, juiceness. Let's continue. Here we have a table that explains how much time a ham will take to be ready for the uh, market. So they say that the, on, on day one, you can cook carcasses and rub hams. Then rub hams second time. It will take seven days. The next process that is a cure for 40 days will take 41 days. And the equilibrate to let osmosis work we will get 61 days and then smoke at no more than 100, 100 Fahrenheit degrees, 62 days. And then we need to age 42 days. This is a process of cure also. And we will get to 104 days and then the ham will be sliced, wrapped, and shipped, and it will take 105 five days. So it means that a, a group of ham will take like uh, three months and a half to be ready, to be ready for the market. So it's a long time. Now let's continue. And here I'm going to show you a three minutes, uh, a three minutes video that I've included on this presentation. And here I, I uh, wrote, I wrote the link so you will you will be able to check this video online. But for now, you can see this uh, here. Let me check. Let's check. Like, let me. Okay.
Okay, so uh, on this video, you were able to check some uh, seven ways to preserve meat without refrigerator. That is our objective here, to analyze these uh, methods in order to preserve uh, your products. So if you need to check this uh, video again, I wrote the link here, and you will be able to use this link and check the video again. So let's continue. Now we are going to continue checking uh, some aspects on how to preserve and uh, how to um, apply these methods in order to preserve the meat. So, um, why skin the ham? Uh, the ham is skin because it allows cure to penetrate. So this way, the ingredients will be able to penetrate through the meat and cells. And also silver side shrinks distorting ham. So this is why we need to skin the meat, not only a ham, but also like bacon or other types of meat. Well, let's continue. Uh, here we can see uh, some types of uh, 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 places to cure, to make dry curing. In this case, they are using a box cured here. And the other example is using a shelf cured. So you can see here that they are uh, storing the meat. And remember that, uh, that this process is, is a, a long time process. It takes about uh, three months and a half. So this is why they need to store the meat in order to be cured and in order to be ready for the markets. So let's continue. And now here they are uh, uh, speaking about the calibration period. And they say that it requires 20 days of calibration at 38 Celsius degrees. The osmosis makes cure concentration more uniform and it will uh, make people sick if eaten too soon. So we need to wait this time, as I mentioned before, like three months and a half because people will get sick if the meat is eaten too soon. Uh, this is for the salt method. And uh, here you can see uh, the aspect of the meat before equilibration. That is not recommended to eat this meat yet, but after the equilibration. So they included a picture here that you can see that uh, will be uh, having this aspect after the equilibration period. Let's continue. Here we can see another example of a aging room. These are uh, parts of uh, bacon that are being cured on this place. So this is, remember that this is a method that type dry cured. And these are the parts of uh, bacon that are being cured in order to be ready for the market. So and this is why they are talking about um, for uh, I mean, 105 days of curing, the, we can say it is 
like three months and a half. So we need to have uh, different places for this curing because if you are trying to produce uh, cured bacon every month, you will need like six places like this one to process the bacon or hams. Let's continue. There are another methods, methods like the one we have here that is the, inject, the injection method. And for this, they use a stitched pump. And with this machine, you can place in several places of the meat to cure and inject the previous ingredients that we saw before, like the salt or sugar or nitrites or nitrates or ascorbates or phosphates and everything that you have here in the previous slides of the presentation. So um, I think this is a good document to, to keep if you need to, uh, to create products like this uh, we saw here. In our next class, we will be uh, checking some methods to preserve vegeta vegetables using uh, salt. Or in in this case, we will be using also a um, sugar and vinegar. But that will be in our next class. So here, let's continue. And there are another type of machine that is used to inject uh, meat. And these are, this is called artery pump. It is similar to stitch, but use the vein artery to distribute the, the brine. So this is similar to the previous uh, machine. And this is another machine that we can use to inject uh, the meat and preserve it for the uh, market, for the marketing. And now uh, let me check again uh, the people that are connected on YouTube. Let me check. Okay, yes. I'm going to answer your question here. Yes, uh, I made a mistake because I started before. But it's okay. Uh, now uh, I repeated the class. Excuse me. I started at a wrong hour. Uh, thank you. Thank you for remember me. <laughs> the hour. You're so nice, guys. Okay, now everything is okay. I repeated the class, so there's no problem here. Let's continue. Just a minute. I'm trying to get my presentation again. Okay, we were talking about the injection methods and we spoke about the stitch pump now we are talking about the artery pump and let's check the next slide and the next slide is the okay is the quiz for the week 12 so if you have some questions please uh, write it or write them on youtube and i'll be able to answer your 
questions. We still have some needs here. We still have some um, minutes. Just a minute. I'm checking. If you have questions, just please write them on YouTube. And remember that this uh, process to preserve meat will take about three months and a half. So you will need to have like uh, six places to store and cure the meat. And also remember that uh, here you have recommendations of the concentrations of these ingredients that are used and recommended to preserve the meat. So remember that, okay, let me check. Here, remember that we will be using a maximum of 200 parts per million of sodium nitrite to preserve uh, these products like uh, ham or uh, bacon. And remember that the maximum recommended concentration of sodium nitrite will be this one here. Um, this one here, uh, one and the 20 parts per million that we saw in our in our previous class, this concentration, this this is why we were learning about how to understand and how to calculate, you know, these concentrations because we will be using these concentrations also to preserve some vegetables in our next class. So uh, remember this, this is a good uh, data here, a good information. If you want to use this type of uh, processes to preserve uh, meat. Let me check another point. Yes, here. We were talking here that if we use different concentrations of uh, sodium nitrites, the aspect of the bacon will change. So the best recommendation for bacon is this one using 120 parts per million of sodium nitrite here. So uh, you can get this product uh, at the drugstore to preserve your uh, meat. So uh, let me check if there is uh, anything else to uh, yes uh, here we saw another recommendation that we can use this type of preservative using a concentration of 550 parts per million here to preserve the uh, or your pickles. Okay, so you can also get this product at a drugstore or pharmacy to cure your uh, meat. Let's check if uh, I have more recommendations for you here. Uh, okay, let's check. Yes, uh, here, remember that we can use 
the, this type of preservation using smoke, okay? In this case, I think the process uh, to preserve the meat will be less than the three months and a half that we saw uh, on the video. So this is also a good recommendation to preserve the meat without using refrigerator and electricity. So this is one of the main objectives here. Learn to use this type of methods in order to save electricity and money. So this is why we are studying this. And let me check if we have uh, another topic to speak about. Ah, yes, here. You will be able to find uh, this product also at the drugstore, the potassium sorbate, if you want, if you need to preserve your uh, homemade meat. Let's continue. Yes, uh, this is the table where we talked about the period of time that the cure time will take for uh, curing uh, ham or bacon during, during uh, 105 days or three months and a half. So be careful with this because if you want to create an industry to process this type of hams, you will need like three months and a half. Three months and a half, three months. But if you need to produce monthly, you will need like uh, six places to rotate these places in order to delivery products each month. So this is my suggestion. If you want to implement this type of curing, you will need like six places to do this type of procedures in order to deliver the cured meat every, uh, every month. Okay, let's continue. Now I will, I will send you the link so you will be able to check this video again. And that'll be all for today. Thank you for remembering me that uh, I started so early today. Uh, I made a mistake, so but I repeated the class, so there's no problem here. And I'll be able to see you next week. Uh, and I wish you a, a good weekend. And I'll see you on the next uh, week. So thank you for being here today. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day.